We are now going to do the ADLS CBT mass brief. Uh, so we're going to start here. We have the course objective uh, designed to train airfield drivers on basic airfield driving knowledge required, required by the AFI 13213 airfield management. So we're going to get started. Uh, look at the airfield layouts and I'm unable to click on any of the tabs throughout this so I apologize in advance for that. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so we're going to talk about runways, taxiways, and aprons. The, the runway is the blue section here. The taxiways are the orange and the red are the aprons. So runways are the paved areas of the airfield used by aircraft to take off or to land. And runways are identified by numbers that represent the orientation of the runway approach in compass degrees rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. Uh, so we have runway markings here. Their uh, runway markings are white. So you have your runway threshold designation, the stripe, uh, the side stripes, and then your runway fixed distance marker here. Uh, if duties require you to operate your vehicle on a runway, you're required to have two-way radio or an escort capable of contacting the tower. It's very important. Uh, another area here is taxiways. They're designated as paved areas that aircraft use to taxi between the apron and runways. Uh, taxiways are alphabetically identified using the phonetic alphabet such as taxiway alpha, taxiway bravo, taxiway charlie, so on and so forth. And then aprons, um, are also referred to as the flight lines where you spend the majority of your driving time, which is very true. We're going to spend almost all of our time on the apron areas whenever we're deployed or we're at our at, at base. So there's a example of aircraft parking spot. So that's spot two, Charlie. And yeah, some of the other markings, you have your vehicle traffic lanes, your restricted area boundary. So your restricted area boundary is this red line down here. Your entry control point is the little white spot where you either walk or drive through. And then vehicle traffic lanes are the lanes right here that the, that the vehicles follow. All right, so now we're going to look at signs. Uh, signs are divided into either mandatory or informational. Uh, mandatory signs. So they have red background and white legend. Uh, the via, so this is an example of a VFR hold line. So here's your red background and your white letters for the runway hold positions. And this is an example of a VFR hold line. Uh, here's an instrument hold line. The ILS instrument landing system is critical area. Uh, the VFR approach hold position sign right here. So you have your 3-6 approach and then you have your, your VFR approach hold, hold line. Uh, informational signs are yellow with black lettering or black with yellow lettering. Uh, taxiway directional signs are yellow with black lettering and normally indicate a taxiway entrance from the runway or the direction to a taxiway or runway. And taxiway location signs are black with yellow lettering and indicate the taxiway that you are on. So you have your taxiway markings, uh, you have your center line, let's see if it'll let me click on this, your VFR, okay, your instrument, there's your instrument there, your edge, edge, you have your double yellow and, and uh, single yellow for your center, you know, your service roads, and then the helipad. Uh, typical example of airfield signs and marking layouts. And we're going to go to the summary. Introduce typical airfield layouts, included aprons, taxiways, runways, and standard airfield signs and markings. And our end of module quiz. Blank are the portion of the airfield where aircraft or helicopter copters are parked before, after, or between flights, and for service and maintenance. It's going to be your aprons. What are the routes? Marked with solid white lines on the edge and a dashed white center line. That is the vehicle traffic lanes. Okay, blank are identified by numbers that represent the orientation in compass degrees rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. It can be your runways. Uh, mandatory instruction sign located at a runway hold line will be what 
color. That will be mandatory instruction sign located runway hold line will be what color? So they are white letters and a red background. Where would this sign be located? A taxiway, taxiway, the VFR hold line for runway 422. It's going to be at the VFR hold line for runway 422. Near what, near what airfield pavement marking would the following be, sign be located? At the VFR hold line. That's correct. All right, 100%. And next, okay, on to adverse conditions. Module, you'll be introduced to procedures and restrictions during night and adverse conditions. Uh, after completion of the module, you'll be able to identify when to use parking, flashing, and headlights during night or restricted vi visibility. We're going to go to our airfield lighting. Uh, vehicle operations during night or adverse conditions can produce significant challenges due to diminished depth perception, glare, and limited visibility. Um, let's see, module one, aircraft parking aprons are the portion at night. This area is usually lit by stadium type lights. So great big lights that shine down like you're in a stadium. Uh, taxiways, designated pave areas, use a taxi between the apron and runways. At nighttime, taxiways have Internally illuminated signs and blue edge lights. Blue edges, blue lights for taxiways. And for runways, runways have white edge lighting during nighttime and inclement weather. It says note, so restricted visibility. Vehicles with daytime running lights will park in a safe location with ignition off, parking brakes set, and emergency flashers on. During periods of severely restricted visibility, there are some other rules to follow. When visibility is less than 300 feet, refueling and explosive loaded vehicles will not be operated without authorization from the wing base commander. Visibility is less than 100 feet, no vehicles except emergency alert vehicles will be operated on the airfield. When visibility is less than 50 feet, it is recommended that a walking guide equipped with a flashing and or luminescent wand be used during emergency movement of alert vehicles. All right, uh, the module we were introduced to procedures and restrictions during night and adverse conditions. And let's go to the quiz. At night, the taxiways have internal illuminant signs and blue edge lights. At night and during inclement weather, it is critical you gain permission from and maintain communication with the tower controller while driving in the control movement area. It'll be true. Vehicles with daytime running lights must park in a safe location with ignition off, parking brakes set, and emergency flashers off. It's going to be false because it says emergency flashers off. For periods of lowered visibility, which of the following statements is true? Uh, so this is Air Force test here. It's going to be all of the above. So visibility is less than 300 feet refueling. Uh, vehicles less than 100 feet flight line vehicles will not be operated on the flight line, and visibility is less than 50 feet, have a walking guide with flashing or luminescent wand. All right, another 100. All right, operating procedures and standards. The module will be introduced to airfield entry requirements, foreign object damage prevention, precaution for driving near aircraft and rules on mobile obstacles. Before driving on the airfield, you must have authorization to enter the controlled area, a license or certification to operate a vehicle, completed the BASE's airfield driver training course, and completed an initial airfield driving check ride. So FOD. When motor vehicles are operated on unpaved surfaces, rocks may become lodged between dual wheels and gravel may stick in the tire treads. When entering the ramp area, or airfield, operators will stop and remove foreign materials from the tires. I think we're all familiar with that. Um, check tires, remove objects, ensure that any loose objects are secured and stowed, and prefer, perform a FOD check anytime you enter the airfield or return to a paved area of the airfield after driving off of the pavement. FOD prevention is your responsibility. Driving near the aircraft, there are maximum limits of five, 10, and 15 miles an hour on the apron and vary by proximity to the aircraft and vehicle type. 
and I cannot click on these. So five miles an hour, any vehicle operating within 50 feet of an aircraft, five miles an hour is your max speed. Another important thing to note here is on the airfield, speed limits will never be exceeded except by emergency response vehicles responding to an actual emergency. A red ball is not an emergency. Uh, traffic flow rules. Always drive and park with the driver's side of the vehicle towards the aircraft. Drive parallel to aircraft taxi lanes where marked. Cross aprons perpendicular to taxi lanes and aircraft parking spot rows. Traffic flow rules yield right of way to taxiing aircraft, including helicopters in hover taxi. Never drive in front of moving aircraft or between a follow me vehicle and a taxiing aircraft. So the follow me is the only one authorized to operate in front of a moving aircraft. Uh, within rules for parking, shocking, and backing up. Within 25 feet of an aircraft, you will not back up toward the aircraft without a spotter to guide you in pre-positioned shock to prevent you from backing into the aircraft. When remaining in the vehicle, set the parking brake, place automatic transmissions to park, or place manual transmissions to reverse. Rules for parking and shocking when the engines are running or about to be started. Do not park within 25 feet in front of or within 200 feet to the rear of, or within danger areas specified for the aircraft. When the engines are running or about to be started, do not park to the side of the aircraft where the personnel in the cockpit cannot see you. Jet blast hazard. Minimum standards are 25 feet in front of and 200 feet to the rear of aircraft. Never drive behind an aircraft while the engines are being run above idle during an engine maintenance run. Undetended parking rules. Uh, when required to temporarily leave the vehicle, park so your vehicle does not interfere with aircraft being taxied or towed. Turn the ignition switch off and leave the keys in the switch. Set the parking brake and place the transmission in park with an automatic transmission or reverse with a manual transmission. Local operating instructions may require you to chalk the vehicle. Emergency and alert vehicles responding to an emergency or alert are exempt from these requirements. You have learned being aware of the position. Additionally, you're responsible for ensuring that your work remains free of mobile obstacles. Nothing too ground breaking there. Module you're introduced to airfield injury requirements, foreign object damage prevention, precaution for driving, and rules on mobile obstacles. I'm going to take our quiz here. Prior to driving on the airfield, all drivers must get checked out by immediate supervisor, complete local airfield driver's training, and possess proper documentation authorizing airfield driving. That's the one. The speed limit when driving a vehicle on a taxiway or inactive runway is going to be determined by the installation commander. Which of the following vehicles may be operated in the path of a taxiing aircraft? Again, that's only follow me vehicles. Which of the following is required when parking a vehicle at the side of any aircraft? Your vehicle will be clear of the wingtips, and the vehicle must be visible to personnel in the cockpit. So it'll be both A and B. Which of the following vehicles are required to be chalked when parked on the airfield? All vehicles are required to be chalked. That's not correct. So vehicles without an integral braking system will be required to be chalked. 100%. All right, on to runway incursions. And this module will be introduced to the various components of runway incursion prevention. Controlled movement area, or the CMA, any portion of the airfield requiring aircraft, vehicles, and pedestrians to obtain specific air traffic control approval for access, normally via two-way radio contact with the control tower. Runway incursion is one of the most serious airfield violations you as a vehicle driver can commit. The leading causes of runway incursions are miscommunication, lack of situational awareness, and insufficient training. Crossing the runway without ATC approval will result in immediate apprehension, suspension of your airfield driving privileges, and a letter to your commander. Runway incursions are easily preventable and warrant serious repercussions if incurred. 
Situational Awareness, SA, is an essential component of a runway incursion prevention program. Maintain situation awareness by understanding and following control tower instructions, using airfield diagrams, and knowing the purpose and requirements indicated by airfield. Runway incursions or occurrences at an airfield involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. Incidents, there's um, lots of incidents. Do not follow other emergency response vehicles on the runway unless the control tower has directly given you permission to enter the runway or you have prearranged an escort with an authorized vehicle driver. Actual examples, uh, 40 feet, so you can pause here, come through this, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run through these. So, runway incursions are serious. Beware of your surroundings. Introduced to various components of runway incursion prevention, you are now able to define various terms such as situational awareness, control movement area, and control movement area violations. And then on to the quiz. Before a vehicle may operate on the runway, the vehicle operator must have which of the following? Two-way radio contract, contact, permission, and have completed the airfield driver's training. It can be all of the above. A... Control movement area violation is a result of an unauthorized entry or erroneous occupation of a runway or other services used for takeoff and landing of aircraft regardless of impact on aircraft safety is defined as a runway incursion. All right, 100%. And... We're going to go to the air traffic control communications. In this module, we'll learn effective radio communication techniques, communication procedures for escorted, unescorted runway vehicle entry, and light gun operations during radio failure. Uh, here in the following principles, radio communications will help eliminate many of the common errors in airfield driving. Don't make the mistake of hearing what you expect or want to hear, rather than your actual ATC instructions. Ask the control tower for clarification when in doubt about an instruction. Ask the control tower to repeat their instruction if you are not sure about what you heard by saying, say again. Read back, include your runway, and runway identifier, all instructions. Additionally, the following common radio techniques will make radio communications quicker and error-free. Prepare first. Your transmission should be well thought out. Before keying your transmitter, know what you want to say and check to make sure you are on the proper, proper radio frequency. Communication should be concise and to the point. Acknowledge all instructions with your call sign. If any of the portion of the transmission is garbled or stepped on, do not assume the unheard portion is irrelevant. Request that the transmission be repeated by saying, Say again. If your call sign is not included in the transmission, don't assume the transmission is for you. And listen, don't assume the transmission is what you requested. Do not use 10 codes such as 10-4 to acknowledge understanding. Do not use words clear or cleared. The term is only used for communication between aircraft, air, aircraft and ATC. Always use phonetic alphabet to pronounce, pronounce taxiway location. Air traffic controllers are busy. When communicating with ATC, you should never assume they know where you are, who you are, or what you are going to do. They gave you authorization to cross or enter a runway. That you know more than ATC about what aircraft traffic is landing, taking off, or flying in the local area. The, the runway is closed or operations are suspended. Always get ATC approval prior to entering the runway environment. Tower communication rules follow a specific format and must be rigidly adhered to. Identify who you are calling. Identify yourself and your location. Communicate specific information or request using proper phraseology. Acknowledge understanding of, of tower controller's instructions by repeating back verbatim the tower instructions. Once you're approved to enter a controlled movement area, you are considered a potential moving obstacle by the tower. It is imperative that direct and continuous radio communications be maintained with the tower to avoid becoming a hazard to aircraft movement. Note, vehicles operating on the runway must use rotating beacon lights or hazard warning flashers. 
All vehicles out, a radio will be escorted by a vehicle with a radio in direct communication with the control tower. Light gun techniques. Uh, let's review tower light signals for greater clarity. Note, during daytime operations, glare may reduce your ability to see tower light gun signals. So you have, these are solid, these are flashing. It's important that you follow the ATC light gun instructions exactly as specified on the AFVA 11240 placard slash decal to prevent a runway incursion. So this is why these are fixed to the dash of our vehicles. So you don't have to think about it. You can just look and see what it means. So you have, let's say a flashing red means clear the taxiway or runway. Or an alternating red-green means general warning, exercise extreme caution. In the unlikely event of radio failure after you've entered the runway, they will attempt to get your attention by flashing the runway edge lights. If the edge lights begin flashing while you're on the runway, immediately contact the tower and respond to light gun signals. Exit the runway immediately if you're unable to regain radio communication with the control tower. In this module, you learn effective radio communication techniques, communication procedures for escorted, unescorted runway vehicle entry, and light gun operations during radio failure. After completing the progress check, select the yeah. so end of module quiz. While operating on a runway, vehicle operators must obey and respond to radio instructions and light gun signals displayed by which base agency? It's going to be the control tower. This light gun signal means to clear the active runway. This light gun signal means general warning, exercise extreme caution. And now on to the end of course test. You have now completed the instruction portion of the airfield driving course. For you to receive credit for this course, you must complete this multiple choice test with a minimum test score of 80. I'm going to jump to the test. What are the color of the runway markings and runway hold lines? White runway markings and yellow runway hold lines will be the answer. Blank are the portion of the airfield where aircraft or helicopters are parked before, after, or between flights. It's going to be the aprons. Which of the following is required when parking a vehicle at the side of any aircraft? Vehicle will be clear of the wing ticks, tips, and vehicle must be visible to personnel in the cockpit. So it's going to be both A and B. Prior to entering crossing a runway, drivers will stop at the runway hold line, contact airfield management, stop at the runway hold line, contact control tower via two-way radio to ask for permission to enter and cross. It's going to be B. You contact the control tower, not airfield management. The speed limit maximum when driving a general purpose vehicle within 25 feet of a parked aircraft is 5 miles per hour. What is the speed limit for a designated traffic lane within 200 feet of a designated aircraft parking area? It will be 15 miles an hour. When are vehicles responding to red ball incidents allowed to exceed speed limits? They are not allowed to exceed speed limits. Only true emergencies. Where would this sign be located? At the VFR hold line for runway 422. Pick the correct statement. Runways are designated with letters. Runways are designated with letters. Runway numbers represent the orientation of the runway approach in compass degrees rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. Crossing the runway hold lines and entering a runway without ATC approval will result in immediate apprehension, suspension of airfield driving privileges, and notification of the squadron commander. It's all the above. What is depicted below and what must a driver do when they approach it? It's going to be an instrument hold line. Obtain approval from tower during inclement weather before crossing. Which of the following statements is our true for chalking parked vehicles on the airfield? Alert emergency vehicles responding to an emergency are exempt. All vehicles are required to be chalked. Both, none. So it'll be A. Emergency vehicles are exempt from chalking. 
When parking a vehicle with a manual transmission in close proximity to an aircraft, what gear is the transmission left in? So in manual, it is reverse. Which of the following actions are required when parking a vehicle on the airfield? Leave keys in the ignition, park vehicle so it does not interfere with aircraft being towed or taxied, and place automatic transmissions in park or manual in reverse. So it'll be all of the above. When an aircraft's engines are being operated, vehicles will not be parked less than 25 feet in front and 200 feet to the rear of an aircraft. 25 and 200. It's the magic numbers. This light gun signal means clear the active runway. This light gun signal means general warning, exercise extreme caution. What must an operator do when approaching an active runway? Stop, contact the tower to ask permission to cross the runway. That will be it. You always have to get permission to, to enter the controlled movement areas. Personnel operating within the controlled movement areas will have two-way radio contact with the tower or will have an escort with two-way radio contact. When approaching an aircraft at night, vehicle operators should do which of the following? Turn off headlights and leave parking lights on. That's the one. Except when an aircraft is being serviced, loaded, or unloaded, a vehicle should never be driven within 25 feet of an aircraft. When entering the airfield, vehicle operators must perform which of the following? Ensure the equipment carried is stowed, inspect their vehicle for FOD, remove any rocks that are wedged between the tires and treads. So be all of the above. What are the leading causes of runway incursions? Miscommunication, lack of SA, and insufficient training. So it'll be all of the above again. Before entering the control movement area, vehicle operators must do which of the following. Completely stop at the, at the runway hold line, establish two-way radio contact with the control tower, and then complete your airfield driver's training in accordance with the local airfield driving program. All of the above. During aircraft emergency on the runway, which of the following vehicles have permission to cross the runway without contacting con the control tower for approval, and that will be none of the above. All vehicles must, must approach parked aircraft with the driver's side of the vehicle toward the aircraft. Which is a correct statement concerning communications. Acknowledge all instructions with your call sign. If your call sign is not included in the transmission, don't assume the transmission is for you. Vehicle drivers cannot use the word clear or cleared when communicating with ATC. All of the above. When communicating with the tower, which communication is correct? Tower. Maintenance 1 is crossing runway 12. Maintenance 1, request permission to cross. Tower. Maintenance 1, at taxiway alpha, request permission to cross runway 12. It'll be Charlie. If a portion of the control tower's transmission is garbled or stepped on, what should you do? Ask the tower to repeat the transmission by saying, say again. During inclement weather or at night, what must a vehicle temporarily parked on any part of the aircraft apron do with their vehicle lights? Turn on your flashing lights or your caution lights. All right, we scored 100 on the end of the exam. That will be the end of the ADLS CBT. Thank you.